Once again, we need to verify the divergence theorem. So first of all, let us calculate the divergence. Well, in our case, uh, we have a vector field in spherical coordinates, so we're going to have to use a special formula. So in spherical coordinates, the divergence is calculated by taking this expression and then multiplying it by the r component, so r cosine theta, and then plus or minus r sine theta, the partial derivative with the respect to theta, and the sine theta times the theta component. So sine theta times r sine theta. And then the last component, the phi component, will be equal to just this component itself. So all we have to do is just to write this down, sine so theta cosine phi. So evaluating this, the, this becomes 3r, uh, r to the power of 3. So if you differentiate it, it becomes 3r squared. Uh, taking away this square over here, we get 3 cosine theta. Uh, taking the derivative with, with respect to theta, first of all, we can get rid of the r first. So that we have sine squared theta. If we take the derivative with respect to theta, we get 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then for here, this is with respect to phi, so I can just pull this out and then cancel it out. So we differentiate cosine phi with respect to phi. So we get negative sine phi. So canceling, we get 5 cosine theta negative sine phi. So this is the divergence. So now we need to calculate the divergence over the volume of this uh, of the region enclosed by this by the by this surface over here. So this is essentially a a half a sphere. So you see that if you specify the parameters, so this is theta, and then this is phi, and then this length here is r, you see that phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, the r goes from 0 to a big r, and then theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. If it goes to pi, it draws out the entire sphere. Now we're going to go to pi over 2, so it draws out half the sphere. So going back to this, so let's copy the expression for the divergence minus sine phi. So dv, that's just the volume unit for the spherical coordinates. And the range goes from 0 to r, 0 to pi over 2, as we discussed before, 0 to 2 pi. So we, we can evaluate the r term first. This is r to the power of 3 over 3. And uh, I'm going to evaluate the phi term first, as you'll see why. So sine theta, sine phi, d phi, d theta. Now for this term, there's no phi term over here. So all you get is uh, 2 pi. So I'm going to multiply the phi outside as well. So I'm just going to write this out. Now for this component over here, we have, uh, we're integrating sine phi d phi from 0 to 2 pi. And if you integrate a sine or a cosine with respect to something uh, from 0 to 2 pi, all you get is 0, because as you'll see, this becomes negative cosine phi. So cosine 2 pi is equal to negative 1. Cosine, negative cosine 0, that's negative 1, so it's just 0. So then this term goes away. So all we're left with is this over here. So moving on, I'm going to uh, move this 2 over to the inside and then use the double angle formula. This gives us sine 2 theta. So this transformation here will be handy. So writing out the constants, we have all these. And the integral becomes from 0 to power over 2 sine theta, sine 2 theta should be. So sine 2 theta, d theta. So integrating this, we got negative cosine 2 theta divided by 2 from 0 to 2 pi, or pi over 2. Now substituting this in, we get cosine pi, which is equal to negative 1. So we get negative negative 1, so we get 1. And then substituting 0, we get cosine 0 is just 1, so we get minus 1. So as you can see, this becomes 2 over 2, this becomes 1. So the answer is 5 over 3 pi r to the power of 3. So this is the answer for the for the volume integral of the divergence. So for the next step, we'll have to check the surface integral.